Welcome to this edition to Diligence Inside Australia's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter and I'll be your host for today's show. We're here at the Governance Institute of Australia National Conference and it's a collection of company secretaries and corporate directors that gather together and try and get their arms around the changes that are happening in governance and in the boardroom. And today's topic is going to be a unique topic. It's called How a Generation Z Entrepreneur Views Corporate Boards. And actually, um, in doing this for over 450 shows, I've never had a teenager on as a guest. But today's the first, and I'd like to welcome Taj Pabari, who's the CEO of 56 Creations. He's one of Australia's rising entrepreneur stars. He's won a bunch of awards as a youth innovator and entrepreneur. And uh, Taj, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. And um, again, at the ripe old age of 19, you started your company, uh, 56 Creations, at the age of 14. Mm. I'm not sure what our audience was doing at 14, but I'm pretty sure they weren't starting their own company. But how about if we just set the foundation and you talk a little bit about 56 Creations and your journey to get where you're at today? Yeah, absolutely. So 56 Creations teaches kids how to start their own business or social enterprise, along the way teaching them about transferable skills, things like communication, collaboration, creativity. Uh, skills that we think are, are really quite fundamental in that workforce of the future. An economy that no longer cares about what we know, but an economy that cares about what we do with what we know. Uh, and we think that comes with a new set of challenges and it's something that we, well, I get the opportunity to work, work on and actually get to work with young people firsthand uh, and teach them about the future of work, which is pretty exciting. And I think for me growing up, uh, I hated school. I hated primary school. Um, I wasn't very good at it. My teachers didn't want me there. I didn't want to be there either. Uh, and 56 Creations was born as a result of my own personal challenge with, with the schooling system. And we wanted to create a new way for young people to, to engage uh, and actually start their careers. Uh, from a very young age and that's exactly what we've done over the last uh, four years and we've been able to do that with around 60,000 kids now so it's great I love it just amazing um, so let's try and take mm. all that and translate it back so my first question to you is when you started the company or sometime mm. along the way did you form yeah. a board or advisory board and if so how did you choose who you were going to use as advisors well I think like as young people when we have our highs there are a lot higher than the average human being, uh, or young entrepreneurs in particular, when we have our highs, are a lot higher than the average human being. And in turn, when young entrepreneurs have their lows, they're a lot lower than the average human being. And I think uh, that has its merits. We go for the impossible. We don't know what's out there. So we go for the impossible. And when, when we fail, we're always failing above everyone else. Um, the downside to that, uh, obviously, is when we make mistakes. We're not as worldly wise. We don't have the life experience. We don't have the life connections that someone who might have started a business at a slightly older age would have. Uh, and I think for me, when I started 56 Creations, I was 14 years old. I think I was in grade eight, grade nine. Uh, and it was imperative that, sure, we, I think when we first started, we didn't incorporate until a year later. Um, but from comfortably our first, second month of business, we'd set up an advisory, uh, an advisory uh, team. It wasn't an official board at the time. Um, and for me, it was just, it was mentors that were kind of considered slightly more than mentors that I'd actually listen to um, and just bounce ideas, bounce ideas off. So we set that up literally like a month after the organization started. Uh, people who I trusted, people who had achieved the things that I wanted to achieve. Um, and then some who'd complete, who had very different skill sets. So we brought on, for me, I was like in grade eight, grade nine, so I didn't really have too much knowledge about education. So I needed a teacher because we were selling an education product. So we brought on a principal um, who taught in Vanuatu, who taught in PNG, who taught in Australia as, as obviously in those executive positions, which I thought would be pretty useful to have, have on that board um, or that team. And we put together a whole set of different people, university professors, directors of universities, um, and then some slightly business orientated people as well. We put a high net wealth impact investor on that board and that was I think for me it was just an opportunity to connect and interact with some really amazing people in a mentoring capacity but a slightly more formal formal way and I think uh, for me that was something that was priceless and something I'll probably yeah probably never forget. Yeah. Mm. So you had the chance to not only present uh, be on a panel here at the conference but mm. to hear other panelists mostly talking about um, board issues and that so 
when you come away from this event, yeah. so what did you think of all you heard about corporate board responsibilities? Mm. And in a couple of years, if you were asked to serve on a board, <laughs> is that something you'd want to do? Yeah, like absolutely. I think um, we, we spoke about some of the, the challenges for boards in, in today's world. Uh, and at 56 Creations, we literally work with exceptional, curious, and creative young people every day. People who uh, obviously want to change the world, people who want to shape the future of, of Australia's innovation economy, uh, as well as the global economy. And I think young people should be sitting on boards. It's simple. We're going to be inheriting a lot of these companies into the future. And to me, it makes perfect sense that from a very young age, we actually sit on some of these boards, whether it's the age of 18, 19, 20, uh, we have first-hand experience, not as focus groups, but an actual vested interest in having a, uh, having a position on some of these big boards. And that's something we advocate for, for a lot of our exceptional young people. and something we'd love to see uh, corporations over the, next, over the next couple of years actually implement. Yeah. Mm. So back to 56 Creations. So yeah. you've had great growth. Mm. So when you look at it today, what are your biggest challenges in a business sense? Um, and uh, then I have an interesting follow-up question okay. for you. So 56 Creations is a social enterprise. From day one, uh, we were committed to improving the educational outcomes for students who could afford it, um, who paid for our programs, whose parents could afford to pay for our programs, who, who were sent to schools that could pay for our programs. But it was equally important for us as well um, that we'd actually provide entrepreneurial education to the kids who need it. And for us, we identified Indigenous and Aboriginal communities across Australia as a clear target. Uh, so we named the organisation 56 because in numerology, the numbers five and six actually means opportunity. And our vision was to provide every single young person, regardless of their age, gender or postcode, with the opportunity to have access to a world-class educa entrepreneurial education. Uh, and we're so lucky we've been able to do that. It's a straight one-for-one -one model um, and it makes it quite inclusive. Um, so our business is a business for good. It allows us to, to obviously, we're a for-profit company, so it allows us to raise impact investment when we need to. Uh, but obviously have a strong social impact as well. We're able to give back to the kids who need it. And I think for challenges, uh, or one of the biggest challenges for us is, is how do we scale that up? How do we reach more kids who need entrepreneurial education in the communities that can't afford it? And it's looking at new opportunities to fund our uh, not-for-profit work uh, and our social work in some of these communities. So if I was an investor in your company and we were at the annual meeting, mm. the question as you stood up there that I would ask is, what happens yeah. to the company if something happens to you? Oh, I think we'd be screwed personally. I think, <laughs> I think I'd do a lot. Like I think uh, our staff would probably, I don't know. I don't know what they'd say, but um, yeah, I, I think we've probably not done too much uh, forward planning in terms of what would happen when, when I move on uh, or if like yeah. I got hit by a bus. But, um, it's certainly something that we probably need to think about slightly more on a more strategic level. So you learned um, something today, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I'm sure these guys are pretty great. Um, they, they're adaptable, highly adaptable. Um, and I'm sure, sure they'd find their feet after a while. Yeah. Mm. So final question for today. Um, and this is sort of a chance to do the uh, interview out there to all the uh, um, companies that are listed that are going to be watching this. So if you were to join a corporate board, what skill sets do you think you bring that that board should be interested in look I, as i said before i think when we not we might as young people not be as worldly wise and i think that's a great thing because we don't see why we shouldn't do anything we shouldn't we don't see why we don't see any roadblocks we go for it we see well that's the goal let's let's just go for it and i think um that's something that's really exciting about young people and i think that's not just limited to, to australian young people i think just young people in general um just go for it. And I think having any young person, whether it's me, whether it's any of our amazing business kids, um, should sit on boards because we're ambitious, we're creative, we're curious. We're a generation of innov in innovative minds. And I think that's something that's quite unique to, to our generation, Generation Z. Well, Taj, thanks for taking the time to join me. Appreciate it. Thank and you. And there you go, folks. If you're interested in lighting up your board a little bit, there's a great candidate, if not today, certainly in a couple of years. And that will conclude this edition of uh, inside Australia's boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back soon with another topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.